Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to be here. I missed you guys a lot. It's been a minute, it's been crazy. I find this time of year so strange for me because it's like I always go away in December and I come back and feel like recharged and ready to go. This happens to me every year and then something happens where I kind of like just kind of plummet down and get really low energy and unmotivated, which is weird because it's the start of the new year. It's the time where we should all feel like kind of geared up, ready to go, motivated, but this time of year does get tricky, especially if you live in a really cold climate like Toronto where our winters are really cold and snowy. That's why it's so important for me to keep doing these videos because they really do get me out of this slump. I know it's weird, but it's true. Like when I make these videos, I get out of this slump, but sometimes there aren't enough hours in the day. But today is a fun day for me because I just really dedicated a good amount of time to make this video and talk to you guys about the things that I'm lusting for for 2022. Some luxury pieces, some fashion pieces you need. Let's jump right in. So before we get into some of the amazing things I'm lusting for this year, I'd really like to thank Urban Revivo for sponsoring today's video. I gotta tell you guys, I love Love, love working with Urban Revivo. Sometimes I'll put on a dress from Urban Revivo and I'm like, is this Prada? Like the cuts are beautiful, the quality is beautiful. The attention to detail, but also the classic yet very fashion forward aesthetic Urban Revivo has going on. It's a really unique fashion brand. You know, there are so many affordable fashion brands out there that are really on trend and a lot of it always kind of looks the same. There's some cool trendy pieces and they're the popular pieces of the season and they end up being pieces that you see on a lot of different people because they're affordable and they're popular and they're on trend. What I really, really love about Urban Revivo is that I feel like I'm a step above those popular affordable fashion brands where it's like the quality is several notches above, like just beautiful quality, a beautiful feeling. And then the pieces are, you know, trendy, but also very classic pieces that I could see having for years and years to come. Versatile transitional pieces that can carry over from season to season. Lots of different great options for resort wear, vacation wear. Beautiful, beautiful pieces for winter and the climate that I'm in right now. So finding pieces that are cozy, comfortable, and weather appropriate, especially for the deep freeze of Toronto, are so, so key for me. Dresses that I could layer and wear for different seasons, add accessories like belts to give the pieces more dimension. It just gives so much versatility with my wardrobe and what I currently have, but it also works so well with my personal style. I love pieces that I could add to and wear in various different ways and also wear in different seasons. A dress that I can wear with a turtleneck for winter and then go sleeveless for spring. Add a belt to, you know, highlight my waistline or kind of go for like a straight A-line look, you know, very runway, very what's happening right now in fashion. Just super gorgeous, stylish pieces. Urban Revivo makes me feel so stylish. I feel like I'm in a piece, like a really good quality piece but the prices aren't those luxury designer prices. So it's really that beautiful marriage of like affordability, fashion, function, and style. I love working with Urban Revivo. You guys know I won't vouch for a brand that I really don't like. If I'm telling you guys about it, it's because I truly love it. So as always, you guys, I will link absolutely everything down below. If there are any pieces that you truly love or that you could see yourself rocking, make sure you check out all the links and check out the Urban Revivo website. There are so many more beautiful pieces and so many different trendy and classic styles. All right, let's get right into some of the beautiful pieces that I'm loving for this 2022 like some of these are fashion pieces that I just feel like do we need them do we because I feel like you know you and I we're in it together you know what I mean I know a lot of you guys love fashion the way I do and you're collectors and you like to get certain pieces of the season and so I kind of look at it like we're in it together like do we need these things? No, I mean, we never need these things. And then there's some high-end jewelry pieces that I'm really lusting for. Um, I'm definitely not gonna tell you that we need them. We don't, <laughs> but uh, they are things I'm lusting for, so I decided to include them and we'll get into those. So let's start with number one. 
So the first thing I am going to start with is a jewelry item, which is not, you know, necessarily fashion, but you know, high-end jewelry and fashion do go hand in hand. And lately I've been on this weird jewelry kick and I've been really obsessing over some Van Cleef and Arpels pieces. You know what I should do? I should really do an updated jewelry video, like an updated video of like what I'm wearing day to day, because I switch it up a lot and I keep a lot of my jewelry in the bank, so I'll go and switch out pieces and wear those for like a month straight and then switch them out. So I feel like I should do an updated video of like what I'm currently wearing. We should, yeah? What do you think? But the first thing I wanna tell you guys about is the Van Cleef Five Motif Clover Bracelet. The Van Cleef Five Motif Vintage Alhambra Bracelet. Now I'll pull up photos because I don't know the name of this particular bracelet. Like it's a vintage Alhambra, but the actual little clovers are like, not a mirror metal, but it's like, it kind of looks mirrorish. It has a lot of ridges in it. It's a cool kind of like texture on the gold. I think it only comes in yellow gold, but I, it could come in rose gold. I've definitely never seen it in white. I think I've really only seen it in yellow gold. It's something that I'm really, eyeing these days like I really really <laughs> want this bracelet and here's the thing I lost my Cartier just in clue I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly in the summer I was surfing on the lake I just keep it on at all times with my love bangle I had the just in clue in yellow gold with the diamonds on the tip the nail I was surfing on the back of my boat in the summer if you follow me on Instagram maybe you caught a couple of those stories and it must not have been clicked in. I don't know how it came loose, but I got on the boat and I instantly realized that the bracelet was not on because it was only the two that I wore on this wrist. And now I only have the one. So I just kind of want to like add to my stack. And I think that the Van Cleef would be like such a pretty little, you know, addition to this. I'm really, really upset over the Cartier. Not gonna lie. But yeah, I do want to start adding again to my stack. Um, so I'm thinking the Van Cleef will be a good start. What do you think? Next on my list, I want to talk about a pair of Mugler jeans, not like I've talked about in the past, not the infamous G-string jeans, which I know a lot of you guys know about. They're not like mainstream fashion, but they definitely are popular in the fashion scene, those Mugler G-string jeans. They've been covered a lot on social media. I've seen them a lot on Instagram and TikTok. And I talked about them here over a month ago where I was talking about things that I would not buy or things that we should all not buy. And here's the thing. I actually think those Mugler jeans are kind of cool. I think they're a little racy and extra, but they're a vibe and I feel like they work for certain people. Like for me, I could see myself liking them but I also could see myself feeling weird in them. And also I do think they got really popular in the fashion scene. So sometimes, you know, when things get popular really fast, I kind of like to stay away as well. However, there are another pair of Mugler jeans that are really similar to these without that like G-string vibe about them. And I really, really like them. And it's actually everything that I kind of like about those other jeans, but without that like kind of x-rated vibe on the back. I love the two-tone vibe about the jeans. I love that they're black and with the dark denim or like medium wash denim, so cool. And I just think they're very cool and fashionable without being too much. I do think they're really, really cool and they're definitely on my list list. Number three, the Valentino platform pumps. I believe they're called the Tango pumps. I don't know why they're called the Tango. They come in many different colors. I don't know. Anyways, I really love these. Now, I know these are not for everybody. I talked about Versace platform shoes, Mary Janes and boots that are very, very popular, just super popular on social media. Sometimes things aren't necessarily so popular in real life, but we live in this world now that it's like social media is a part of real life. So if you see it so, so often on social media, it does still kind of get played out and it does get oversaturated for me particularly because I just can't see things so often and then still look at them the same way. Personally, uh, I never was 
dead over the Versace platforms. I think that, you know, people call them like the Bratz doll shoes. Like, I think they're cool. You know, I don't think I would want to spend like so much money on them just because I think they're cool. They'd have to really be something I'm obsessing over, right? And I think the Valentinos have the perfect vibe for me. First of all, I've told you guys so many times, I'm 5'2", I know I look taller, but that's because I dress to look taller. That's why I make videos on these things. But I am only 5'2", so I personally love a big platform, a really, really sky-high heel, and you know, especially if it's just a super fashionable and extra vibe, you know? And I feel like the Valentinos are that, you know? They're extra, they're fashionable, but they're not too much. They're not like the Bratz doll vibe. So for me, I will take the Valentinos over the Versaces, right? But they kind of are in the same category. It's a vibe that's really, really coming back, like this whole exaggerated platform shoe and boot, and it's just coming back with a vengeance. I'm not talking about regular platforms that we have seen. I mean, like we've talked about those shoes, the Louboutin daffodils, other really exaggerated platform stiletto heels. Like whenever these trends come back again, they come back a little differently. So it's not quite the same. They're like chunky heels with the chunky platform. So it's not quite the same as the other styles we saw, you know, 10 years ago from Louboutin. So I really, really love the Valentinos. I'd love to get my hands on them, but they're sold out everywhere. So if you have an in anywhere, you know, DM me on Instagram because I'm really on the hunt for these, especially in the pink. Next, I want to talk about a coat that I've talked to you guys about many times. I already own it and I kind of want another one. Am I crazy? You can tell me if I'm crazy. Okay. It's the Max Mara Teddy Coat, which... I have been talking to you guys about since 2019. I love this coat, love this coat. I own one and I truly, truly love it. I have it in the pink, pinkish color. I love it. And I'm kind of thinking like, oh, I really want another one. Do I want it in the classic Teddy color or is that too much? Like this is where we're in it together. You know what I mean? Like I need your help on this. I need your opinion. Like I love the classic Teddy color, but is it too overdone or is it a classic? And then there's like other beautiful colors that I've been seeing right now. Like I saw like a blush pink, like a baby pink, stunning. I'm obsessed over it. And then there's also one that's like a deep, deep, dark chocolate brown. So I just really, really need your help on this. I really want another one. Do I need it? No, no, I don't. And then I think to myself, you know, I have so many coats like Maytel, you really don't need this. Stop, just stop. I don't need this. <laughs> I already have one. I just feel like, oh, I should have a classic one. It's just so warm. It's so warm and so stylish. Like I can look like a mess underneath. Like I could just be in like a full sweatsuit, throw on this teddy coat and still look chic and stylish. I love pieces like that. Especially, you know, I'm Canadian. Like is this, so I'm, it's just, this is what's going on in my, in my head. So I've been thinking about it for like a solid couple weeks. So, you know, not that long, but I keep trying to tell myself, no, Maytel, you do not need this. But then I keep on thinking about it. So what's a girl to do? Okay, number five, this is kind of general, but I really want to get this year some more Chanel ready to wear. Now I have bought a couple Chanel bags this year and I don't buy like a bag a month. You know, I buy a couple to a few a year, I would say, right? I've been feeling like this more and more lately that I'm just more into the ready to wear in general in for all fashion houses than I am into bags necessarily. I mean, I love bags and I love to get, you know, sometimes the bag of the season and I definitely love the classics. I definitely gear more towards the classics, especially because my style is definitely more eclectic and sometimes out there. I do like to stay more classic with the bags. But you know, with Chanel, I've been really into the ready to wear over the last couple years. And I just feel like the pieces are just so beautiful and amazing. And I love to get pieces from the Chanel collections because it's just like, there's nothing more luxurious to me than, you know, a Chanel sweater or a Chanel dress. Like I just feel all the fashion feel. I feel stylish, I feel luxurious. I feel classic. I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> I love Chanel ready to wear. 
And so I wanted to put it on this list because it's just like, I want to prioritize my money a little bit more, you know? I definitely can't afford to get the latest of everything all the time. You know, my job, I love it. Being in fashion, talking about fashion, and making a career out of the things that I love, you know? And sometimes it's hard for me because I have to think about getting the pieces of the season because it's part of my job to show you and review, right? But, you know, I need to spend my money wisely. Yes, I do allocate some money that I make to fashion because it's, you know, part of the job. But I also have to be sensible about it. And with Chanel, it does get difficult because it's so astronomically expensive. But in 2022, yeah, I do want to kind of just budget according to, you know, some trendy pieces, but some cool classic ready to wear Chanel pieces that will just kind of be in my wardrobe forever, you know, that I could pass down to my daughter. Have an archive of absolute fashion masterpieces. You know what I mean? Number six, another pair of shoes, but totally different than the Valentinos that we talked about. I'm really eyeing the Attico mules. I think they're really cool and different and they're kind of popular in fashion right now. Like I, I definitely do see them on my, you know, Instagram scroll, but they're not oversaturated to me. Hopefully they won't become that way. I just think these are really, really cool. I love the shape of them. They just have like such a high fashion vibe about them to me. I love that they come in so many different cool, vibrant colors because that's kind of like how I like to dress. Bright and vibrant, especially in the spring summer months. And I think these will be just such a vibe for spring and summer. They'll look good with skirts, dresses, jeans. And when I think about, you know, getting a shoe of the season, I'm definitely leaning the most towards these, even more so than the Valentinos, just because I think these are something I could get a lot of wear out of. Whereas the Valentinos are so high, they might not look good with everything, right? These though, I do think are a little more versatile, especially for my style. And I just think the Attico just has really cool pieces. You know, they don't rely a lot on branding actually at all. You don't really see any branding on their clothing. I think their shoes are unique and cool. I've talked about the Attico many times here on this channel. I've mentioned a lot of their shoes before because they have a lot of really cool pairs of shoes. And these shoes, like they're just kind of, these mules, they're like a pair that we haven't really seen before. At least I haven't. Like they don't really remind me of any vibe from the past. They're just different and cool and, you know, just very Attico. So I just really like them. I would say on this list, they're one of the most realistic fashion items I'll probably be getting because I won't be getting everything on this list. Number seven, let's talk Hermes. Let's talk Hermes Kelly. Definitely on my wish list. Now you might be confused because I told you guys, I'm not buying Hermes or I don't know when the next time I'll be buying Hermes is. That's very true. But I was really specifically talking about the whole Hermes experience, the Hermes game in the Hermes boutique. I'm not saying I won't ever buy an Hermes bag from the Hermes boutique again. I mean, I'm just saying right now, I don't want to go and play that game. Like I don't see myself doing it anytime soon because there's so many other things in fashion I want to buy that, you know, just buying so many different things from Hermes just to get the bag, just something I don't really want to do at this point in my life. You know, maybe if I, you know, do better with my job and I can afford to do it all, then maybe I will. But right now, if I'm getting Hermes, I'm looking on the resale market, I would definitely love to get a Kelly 28. Now, I know it's so popular to get the tiny ones that even the 25, which is not that tiny, but the 25 and the even smaller size in the Birkins and the Kellys. For me, I never go for those tiny, tiny ones because I feel like the 28s and the 30s when it comes to Birkin and Kelly, 30 centimeter Birkin, 28 Kelly, is just the most classic size. And like I said, I like to keep my pieces forever. So if I'm going for a Kelly, I would love a size 28. I would love a black with Palladium. Now that might be boring to many of you, but again, classic and I love it. And I can just be a little more eccentric with my outfit. So definitely would love a black 28 centimeter with palladium, not too picky on leather. Yeah. So that's that. 
Number eight, would love to get my hands on the Balmain X Barbie collab collection. Oh, just so iconic. I saw Bretman Roth wearing it and it was just, I mean, I think he's working on the campaign and you know, he's definitely selling me on it. He could do no wrong in my eyes, but just in general, what I've seen from this collection, so cute, so me, and just so iconic. I just, first of all, love Balmain. I think it suits my body really well and it suits my style. There's so many pieces I always love every season. I'm really, really attracted to just that whole vibe, that energy, that kind of like girly Barbie vibe, you know? It brings out the little girl in me, you know? The girly little girl. I've always been girly and always been attracted to these super feminine pieces. And I just love how feminine this collection is definitely speaks to me. I would love to get a couple pieces from it. And last for this list today for 2022 is a winter item, another footwear item, but I want to give it to the Marant wedge boots that I feel like are classic for Marant. Like she does this every season. She does these concealed wedge boots. She kind of like started the trend of the wedge sneaker, which a lot of people don't like. And I got to tell you, when it comes to the wedge sneaker, the only ones I really like are the Marants. I don't know if she's been doing them the last couple of seasons. They definitely were popular like years ago, but she still does the concealed wedge in the boot. And I love it for a winter boot because it's one of those things where you're comfortable and they're functional and you can wear them in gross weather, but there's a concealed wedge. So, you know, you can look a little more fashionable, you know, you can rock them with leggings and a hoodie and just look a little cooler. How good would the Marant wedges look with the Max Mara coat? You know? So it kind of makes me really think maybe I do need another Max Mara. No, I don't. I don't need it. God, stop. I don't need it. I'm sure they're boots you've seen before. They are kind of classic when you think about Isabel Marant. These definitely come to mind, especially for like winter fashion. They're not like high fashion or anything, but they are like just cool, cute, stylish, boots to rock during winter and because I live in a deep freeze for like almost six months of the year, these would be great. So definitely on my list and also realistic because by the way, these were on sale half price on Essence. I don't know if they still are, but if you are interested in these, check them out on Essence. Pretty sure they're still on sale as of right now. This is probably filmed a few days before you're gonna see it. Good luck. I hope they have your size. Cause that's always the problem with sale items for me. They never have my size. Once it's on sale, they never have my size. But hopefully, you know, if you love these, you can take advantage of the sale. That's it. And that wraps up my list for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it for you. You guys really take me out of the winter slump. You know what I mean? Like you keep me from spiraling down into seasonal depression. I love you guys. And I love being here with you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please let me know what's your favorite pieces and give me some advice. You know I need you guys so much. And I'm back on the schedule, so I'll be back really soon with another really fabulous video. I cannot wait to see you. So until next time, bye for now.